Hi, I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about what goes into a survival kit. It's not the whole kit by any means. Specifically what we're going to talk about are just some bare bones basics to remember. I know I've talked about this a little in other videos in our bug out bag video and a few others, but bare bones basics uh, Dave Canterbury teaches uh, the concept of the five C's or the six C's. I think he's actually up to about 10 or 12 C's at this point. But usually I talk about the four, and today I'm going to talk about the five C's. Cutting, combustion, container, cordage, and cover. The cutting part is real simple. It's a knife. A good knife. This one happens to be a really good knife. But uh, any quality knife will do, and the best survival knife in the world is the one that you got on you at the time that you need it. So uh, whatever knife you've got, that's, that's going to be your survival knife. Um, so try to have a good one on you. Try to buy quality tools. Um, if, you, if you don't have a knife like that or you choose not to have something that size, this would make an excellent alternative. You've got a knife blade. You've got a saw and you've got a whole bunch of other tools. You've got a nice serrated blade in there. So, you know, it's not bad. Me personally, I wouldn't mind carrying both of them. But having at least this, that'll get you by. This is your basic tool, though, and it's the one thing you can't forget. Your knife is all important. We'll get to this in a minute, but combustion. Here recently, I've gotten a little bit of static over our combustion. Um, a lot of guys are asking why I don't just put Bix in the pack. They keep talking about why does every fire starting technology have to be old technology and primitive. Well, I don't mind. Um, put Bix in your backpack. Put the Zippos in there. Put in all of these. I normally recommend everybody have at least three forms of combustion. And the three forms of combustion, you know, I like uh, ferro rod or ferrocerium rod because it works whether it's wet or dry. Uh, the military magnesium bar, I like it because it works wet or dry. Uh, shave off the magnesium, strike the ferro rod, ignite the magnesium. But one of the reasons why I don't like Bix is because this case tends to crack easily. You can break this, especially if it's in a pack or you're doing a lot of rough stuff, you know, running around, you could break this. Also, the button. If this button is pressed down, this lighter constantly leaks fuel. So what you're going to do is leak this thing dry, and then it probably won't work when you need it. Um, but by all means, if you want to throw one in your backpack, throw one in your backpack. I have no problems with a Bic. Um, I really prefer a Zippo because, one, I can use it for a lot of purposes. It'll stand by itself and burn on its own. But any uh, wick and flint lighter, this lighter, or any of these lighters, they'll come apart and... In the bottom here, you can store an extra wick and flint. If you've got seven or eight flints in here, there's more than enough uh, flint there uh, to last you literally for years, uh, maybe maybe as much as a year. Um, with an extra wick, I've had wicks that last you know three four years in a Zippo. Um, also, this lighter is a great lighter because it doesn't just use lighter fluid. This thing will run off of alcohol. It will run off of drinking alcohol, denatured alcohol, rubbing alcohol kerosene, diesel fuel, um, anything but gasoline. You don't want to put gasoline in them. Um, you can even run this off of mineral spirits, turpentine, a uh, whole bunch of other stuff. So there's always fuel around to refuel one of these, and there isn't always fuel around to refuel this. And for me, frozen dead in a ditch is not something I ever want in my future. Uh, so I like to have four or five different methods of starting a fire, including matches. Um, the more chances that you provide yourself, the better off you're going to be. Container, uh, I like to just go old school on this. Military canteen, cup, and a cover. It's compact space, does all your work for you. You can collect water, you can decontaminate it in here by boiling. This is a cooking vessel. If you need to, you can even put some uh, pebbles in this thing, hang it with a trip wire and as an early warning system to make noise. Um, you know, so it covers a lot of uses. Like I said, cooking vessel, water decontamination, everything. Um, so it's a vital part of the kit, and you can't really decontaminate water uh, without it if you don't have any kind of chemicals to do it with. Cordage, cordage is important, very important. Um, I like paracord, and I think every survival instructor in the world recommends paracord, <coughs> with good reason. The different internal strands, you want to make sure that it is military paracord that you're using that has internal strands. 
Uh, these internal strands can come out of here. If you have to, you can use these, uh, pull them free from the skin, and uh, you can use them to uh, fish with, you can use them as dental floss, you can use them to make snares and traps, uh, you can use the outer shell of it to build shelters, you can use the whole rope for that, but because it has so many uses, uh, this is the only thing that truly uh, separated us from the animals when mankind started making uh, his push away from the lower forms of life. We're the only animal in the world that ever invented cordage. Uh, and a lot of scientists uh, think that that's why we, we developed our reasoning ability the way we did. We made this one little turn and we started braiding stuff and before you knew it, we had all kinds of more reasoning abilities. Um, so the paracord is very important. Uh, cover. Just something to keep the rain off of your head. This is just a standard poncho made of sill nylon, uh, about 80 inches long. Uh, will cover your body. You can wear it as a poncho to keep the rain off of you. Uh, or you can also make a shelter out of this using the paracord and this. You can either make it into a triangle or you can make it into a shelf where it's over you like a lean-to in a hurry. Uh, and then I don't mind carrying one of these. It's an emergency sleeping bag. It's not just a Mylar blanket. Um, you know, this is really long and it's an actual bag that you can get inside of and close around you. Uh, plus, it's also covered with a protective coating so that, you know, it's, it's pretty tough. Um, and all of this stuff doesn't take up a lot of space. So, if you remember, cutting, combustion, container, and cordage, you're going to have your survival kit, at least the bare bones basics of it, uh, right there when you need it. And I would keep this kit around me everywhere that I went. Now, I promised we were going to get back to this and all of this stuff. It's a military match container. You know, it's a very small, small item. It has a ferrocerium rod here on the bottom that you could use to start a fire with. It has a signal mirror inside of it so you can get some help. And what I like to do is I make a mini survival kit out of these things and actually one of the best places to store that is just right here with your canteen, right here in this little pouch. You know, water purification tabs are supposed to go there, and you can put some there if you want, but I like to stick this here just so I've always got one of these with me. It's got matches in it, a ferrocerium rod. I take some of the matches, and I use some monofilament line here, and I wrap about 12 or 15 feet around here, just like this, and then lock it off in the base of the match. The match is still usable, but I've got about 15 feet of monofilament line that I could use as a snare. Over here, I've got some just regular eight pound test uh, fishing line that I've done the same thing. This is about 12 feet. I can cut myself a small sapling and use this as a cane pole or I can set this as a night line in a river uh, or a lake to catch fish. I also carry some small sinkers and some small hooks inside of it. And you know, give yourself a couple of hooks and a couple of sinkers. You never know, you may break the line, you may have to replace them. Uh, and only use small hooks, not big ones. Big, big hooks catch big fish. Small hooks catch big fish and small fish. And then I throw in a can opener, uh, just a P38 uh, or sometimes known as a John Wayne can opener. Um, so one thing I find that most people never have with them is a can opener when they do need it. Um, and in an emergency, you know, the last thing you need is to be using this as a can opener and slice your hand open. So these are just some thoughts on your very, very bare bones, basic survival. Uh, remembering the, the five C's right here will get you through most any emergency as long as you have these things with you. And, you know, adding in a little survival kit like that, not a bad idea. Uh, the, you know, the more you know, the less you need. And the more gear that, uh, that you kind of uh, break down to its basic components and make sure that you always have it with you, the better off you are. Uh, those are just some thoughts on some very basic survival stuff. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.